Well, embracing technology can often be challenging, but there are new signs. Indiana manufacturers, logistics companies are not only adopting technology, but maybe giving it a big bear hug as well. Connexus Indiana has a new study out to back that up. The numbers show manufacturers in the state that have integrated tech into their workflow doubled between 2020 and 21. For more on uh, why Hoosier manufacturers are seizing opportunities to use augmented reality or put more cobots on the floor. I'm pleased to be joined by Connexus Indiana President and CEO Fred Cartwright. Fred is in uh, Las Vegas at the Consumer Electronics uh, Show. Fred, uh, thanks for joining us. Great to be here, be here, Gary. Thank you. Yeah, you're, the event you are at uh, CES, 175,000 plus people. It is a massive uh, event, and uh, there's a real reason for you to be there, uh, among others, and that is the Indy Autonomous Challenge. We saw those autonomous race cars uh, flying around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in October. There's going to be an event uh, this week uh, at CES, kind of that next iteration or that next step uh, in the process for autonomous vehicles. Yeah, Gary, it's really exciting to be here because it, it's the buzz of, of CES right now. Uh, to, tomorrow on uh, Friday, the race will be held at the Las Vegas Speedway. And for the first time, we'll have side-by-side -side competition between these you know, autonomous open-wheeled race cars. Yeah, and, and Fred, I thought this was really fascinating, really interesting event at the Speedway in October, and then to get that invitation to go out to CES to put on uh, another show, uh, kind of a, a vote of confidence to what's happening uh, in that sector, and in particular, maybe here in Indiana. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really genius, you know, for the state to do this, because as we've, we've seen out here in our display, and it, it, so much buzz around this car, uh, that's on display. It's a real draw, a magnet for for you know startup companies and others to come in and figure out what Indiana is up to. And of course, we have a lot to tell them. And then we uh, we invite them to the race on Friday as well. Yeah. So Indiana is definitely making a big big statement out here this week. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, Fred. What what does it do for the Indiana brand, if you will, when it comes to manufacturing and innovation and, and technology to be at CES, to have the Autonomous Challenge uh, uh, out there, uh, to have a contingent, you and others from Indiana to be out there, kind of create some buzz around Indiana as a place uh, maybe folks might want to do business? Yeah, I mean, it's a very diverse uh, contingent of folks out here. It's quite amazing from universities to, you know, to startup organizations and, and so on, and IEDC, of course. But uh, I think what it does for the brand is just show that, you know, we're a place to come to, mm -hmm. you know, be involved in a very uh, advanced tech ecosystem uh, broadly across the state. And we've got evidence of that, you know, some of the what, what you reported on earlier, uh, but also all of these initiatives, including, you know, the Indy Autonomous Challenge shows that, you know, we're, we're up to the challenge yeah. here and uh, and we've got, you know, we've got a lot of evidence to back that up. Fred, you've been in your role since July, so you're settled in now. And I know uh, really that digital adoption and technology and innovation really uh, key focus areas for you. There was indications or have been indications certainly that in some respects for all of Indiana's strengths in manufacturing, it had fallen behind uh, in that digital uh, area. But now some signs that maybe uh, folks are, are embracing, manufacturers are embracing uh, technology and innovation uh, as we move forward. Yeah, I mean, it's been a fascinating thing to watch, Gary. I mean, for me, uh, coming in, in in July and seeing through such initiatives as these manufacturing readiness grants that the, the state has helped fund and that Conexus Indiana have, have administered is to see how much difference these have made over a period of, of about a year and a half. I mean, companies, it seemed like we're just at the doorstep of wanting to make some investments. And maybe they were uh, pushed along a little bit by some of the challenges of COVID and not being able to find people and so on. But, you know, the level of interest in automation in uh, additive manufacturing, 3D printing is just been enormous all across the state. So not just central Indiana, but across the entire state.
Yeah, I know, Fred, there's a case to be made that, you know, automation, everybody looks at that, or many look at that and see automation and translate that to job loss. But that's not necessarily the case as you look to the future and, uh, you know, with cobots and all those types of things, that uh, that automation can actually uh, strengthen and enhance the, the, work, uh, the workplace. No, I, I think that's exactly right. I think it, it helps to uh, encourage companies and, and others to upskill you know, their workforce for what's to come. You know, and in increasingly smart manufacturing uh, requires, you know, skills to, to make sure that they, they progress. Fred Cartwright is the president and CEO at Conexus Indiana coming to us uh, this week from Las Vegas. You know, they say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas <laughs> when it comes to Indiana and technology. Let's hope that's not the case, that the word gets out, uh, out in Las Vegas. Fred, appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it very much.